If you spend all day solving technical challenges in a development job, challenges that require coding, research, and trial and error, then what happens to that knowledge once the problem's solved? Well, it disappears. That's too bad because whatever obstacle you overcame, someone else in the world is likely facing the same. So why not give them the solution? That's why coding blogs are still so valuable to developers. They offer the actual step-by-step -step approach someone took to solve your problem to save time and effort. And when you own a coding blog with information others desperately need, it's a valuable asset for you too. In this video, you'll see how I built my blog to 60K monthly users by simply documenting problems I solved in my job to guarantee visitors. And you'll learn how a coding blog is a launch pad for developers to earn valuable side income that can pay you any time of day or night. But what if you're just a normal developer using the same tools as everyone else? What if you don't think you have anything valuable to share on a blog? Well, the fact this opportunity is open to any developer is what makes it so exciting. The first blog post I ever wrote in 2019 was this. Nothing special but it shows how to solve a problem I'd just overcome at work in a practical way. Then a couple of weeks later, I solved another problem and wrote this blog post. And then a week later, this one. You get the idea. But was there a link between these topics? No, except they were all things I'd worked on as a software developer. The great thing about blogging while on a software project is the constant stream of problems and solutions for you to write about. To me, some of them seem trivial, but I wrote about them anyway, and I was later glad that I did. Think about what you could write about on your blog. Your choice of topics will depend on the type of development you do, but to get you started, here are the three main types of posts that I write. One, how-to guides to reach a specific goal. Two, introductions to big topics that make them easier to understand than official documentation. Or three, answers to very specific questions that I have and know others will have too. At the start, it's important not to overthink it. I did no keyword analysis or market research. I just set up a WordPress site and started writing. Would those things have helped? Maybe, but they would have also overwhelmed me and I might have quit before seeing any results. Blogging is an opportunity any developer using any technology can take and choosing the perfect topic to write about isn't that important when getting started. What's more important is staying motivated to keep writing. That's what really determines your new coding blog's success or failure. For the first two months of my blog's existence, nobody saw it but me. It wasn't until I'd written 10 articles that I got regular daily traffic. So how do you stay motivated to keep writing content that nobody reads? Well, three things helped me hit publish consistently so that Google would eventually take notice. One, I knew this was a long game. I'd already tried SEO on someone else's website and failed horribly. Now I was writing about topics I cared about on my own site and was happy to wait. Two, I'd seen with my own eyes that coding blogs work. Almost every day I visited this blog to help me in my job. If he could do it with an unpronounceable blog name, so could I. Three, every time I wrote about a topic, my understanding of it improved. The idea of knowing more than my colleagues kept me going. Nothing happens, then everything happens. Google started to trust my website and listed it in the search results. When that happens, you can see what terms people are searching for, which gives you even more content ideas. I kept adding to my blog and in 2021, it reached 60K monthly users. Not by doing anything clever, but just by carrying on like any developer is capable of. And when you get all these visitors on your blog, the next question is, what now? That's the fantastic thing about running a coding blog rather than writing on other platforms. Visitors read content on a site that you control, not on medium.com, not on Stack Overflow. And when you own a piece of valuable digital real estate like this, a lot of opportunities start coming your way. The potential of my blog became clear when the founder of a respected software tool I write about asked to speak to me. What does he want with an unexceptional developer like me, I thought. Well, turns out he was interested to explore ways we could work together. Boom! I was blown away. When you consistently write on a coding blog, it eventually gets noticed around the world. That can result in job offers, client work, connections, or even getting back in touch with old friends. That alone is exciting, but I wanted to see where else a blog could take me, to see if it could make money while I sleep. So I tried these three things. First was running ads with Google AdSense. Insert a code snippet on your site to show ads to visitors and get a monthly paycheck. 
The most I made in a month was £200. It's nice, but you do need a lot of traffic to get good results. Second, I sold a course to go deeper on one of the topics I talk about on my blog. Developers already take courses, so it's a format they know and like. Making a course is a lot of work, but showing how you develop on screen can be incredibly valuable. Third, I created an ebook as an alternate way to learn the content from my course. Ebooks are faster to make than courses because there's no video and they're easier to update when the technology they cover evolves. Selling products on a coding blog means anyone who reads it can potentially make a purchase 24 hours a day. Since I started selling products two and a half years ago, I've made over £21,000. Not enough to live off, but I'm happy to have learned the skills to make money online. Can I tell you a secret? Creating a coding blog isn't easy. It's one of the hardest things I've done. But if you want to get out of the mindset of applying to opportunities like jobs and instead attract opportunities to you, then it's the perfect place to start. Living in today's permissionless economy is ideal for anyone looking beyond a regular nine to five. So check out this video next to learn what motivates a previously career loving developer to quit his coding job forever.